What is up the world of the living? Welcome back to True Bedrock. My name is Lexp. You see this truck? Where do you think it is? Psych, it's up there. I am as confused about this situation as you are. Okay, so here we are at the commercial district. Uh, we have all the shops, all the stuff, all the everything, and <laughs> oh my god, is this is this Prowl's one? Yeah, <laughs> somebody added compass to it because it's abandoned. Oh, that is that is delicious. But yeah, I'm here, and originally I just wanted to check the profits on this shop because well, somebody once again bought out all of the iron. I'm incredibly tired of digging stuff for people by now. And honestly, I have only myself to blame if I checked this shop tiny bit more, uh, tiny, bit tiny bit less frequently, I probably wouldn't make myself um, constantly have to dig more and more and more iron. <laughs> but oh well, we're here and uh, I think I do have a stash of iron ore somewhere. I'm pretty sure it's actually smelting back home. So don't worry, this will be restocked. The server, the, the iron must flow, although at this point I might consider upping the price of it, because, yeah. I by now have more diamonds than I have iron, and that's kind of alarming. Speaking of, the diamonds, no one bought any, I wonder why. Yeah, the job idea from before did not yet really work yet, and I blame, I blame kind of myself. And I also blame the fact that no one really knows about that job. No one really kind of knows about the latest initiatives of mine or anyone's, really. And that is a bit of a problem! Come on, come on, cake! Save me! Ha <laughs> ha! Got caked! Yeah, uh, that's a little bit of a problem when I constantly try to implement more and more social stuff and people are just like, what? Where? And... Uh, this brought me to an idea, an idea actually first inspired by the cake reviews that were left in front of every single shop. You see, in real life, whenever a shop wants to start selling something or whenever you, you have an opportunity to present for people, what do you do? How do you make public know about it? Well, you put out a call to action in some sort of a public social media thing. And yes, Twitter exists, and yes, YouTube videos exist, but I can't rely on every single person on this server to check out my YouTube channel, right? I mean, they're busy, they have their own stuff to do instead of watching my videos. So, what I think we should do, we should implement something on the server that would tell people about all of our latest initiatives. Maybe, at the same time, smear our competitors, and on top of that, allow us to maybe score a little bit more cash on the advertisements. What I'm proposing, of course, is television. But television doesn't exist in Minecraft, so we're gonna go... We're gonna have to go with newspaper. Cool beans, I hear you say. How are you gonna do that, buster? And, uh, actually, I'm pretty sure that my subscribers are smart enough to know exactly how I could potentially accomplish that. First and foremost, of course, we already have a history of making written books. And written books are incredible in Bedrock Edition. Not only do they allow you to see both pages at the same time, uh, they have plenty, like a large number of pages, and lecterns are absolutely great. The problem with them is that they are tiny bit frustrating. Uh, you can only craft one at a time. Like... Okay, you can actually craft many at a time, correction, but you can only hold one in the stack, which makes copying them incredibly hard. Believe me, I did that. For the money project, I had to copy a lot of books and quills. So that is not necessarily how I want to do this. Especially since I already, once again, I already have done that. Uh, next up would be signs, obviously. Literally posting a sign with information is rather nice. The problem is, of course, that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, 11. You see, this is the problem. There's only so many symbols that fit onto a sign. And really, there's only so, much, so many symbols that fit into a book. Plus, kind of correcting the mistakes takes forever. Because if you typed out, say, uh, Zloy XP... Um, sells seashells sea <laughs> on seashore, 
and then notice that you spelled your own name with Y instead of Y, you'll have to kind of like just tap but left button to get back there and that's kind of infuriating really same actually goes for the items renamed in an anvil there's only so many symbols that you can fit in you can't really uh, send out a message not at all same for the banners they kind of are just there you can't really write on them but then i remembered season zero and I remembered the map I was doing on the season zero. And what I was doing with the map on, on sorry, the season zero is this, uh, this, this text over the landmarks. Uh, if you haven't watched it and if you haven't seen, I actually did texts like landmarks for basically the entirety of the map. These letters are actually floating up above. See, right up there over every single landmark, marking what is where and helping the travelers orient themselves. But they're kind of obscure, and also there is a problem with having a, a newspaper printed like that. Because if uh, this way, if you bought it once, and if I'm using the same land for every single issue, then you can just update your one that you bought instead of Instead of doing, instead of buying a new issue on the on the shop, at the same time, mind you, if you uh, if I want to avoid that, I will have to build a 128 by 128 flat surface every single time I want a new issue of the paper. But now we don't have to do that because cartography table. <laughs> <laughs> I almost entirely forgot about the existence of this little body. I love him so much and uh, I was mistakenly thinking, by the way, at the beginning of the season, uh, that this thing actually has no use in the current version of the game. And I was corrected by my comment section, which once again proves that you guys are way smarter than I am. Alright, we take the empty map and we take a look at it. And it's important that it is non a non-locator map, because if it's going to be a locator map, then somebody will scout out the place where I, I did the perimeter for it and vandalize it. And we don't want that. So we take a map and uh, we just place, say, white concrete, say somewhere. Okay, where, where, where are we geographically? That's the problem with, like, with non-locator maps, really. You can't understand where you are. Okay, let's say we say, uh, issue... Yeah, I wanted to write issue 1, but then I realized how many letters are in the issue 1. Let's let's just go is... Adin. Is 1. Update. Update. And... What? Do you... Yeah, there we go. Is 1. Appeared on the map easily. Now... We're gonna put it here, add a glass pane, rename it into, say, um, mm -hmm, issue 1, Cablemo, and we, you see issue 1 locked. So it's locked now, so it's not gonna update, which means that if we correct this from is 1 or 151 <laughs> to, say, 152, and take a new map while standing in here, in this exact spot. You'll see that the new map will have the updated terrain, meanwhile the old map will not. Which is actually, now that I think about it, this is something I should do with the town of Moonfall, just the entirety of it. Just to have snapshots and kind of baby pictures of it, I'm, I think it's gonna be adorable. But no, we have issue 1 and we have issue 2. And issue 2 we can also lock. And... Tada, we have an issue too. And if we want an entire print of them, well, one thing we can do is we can stand in the same spot and just right click a bunch of empty maps. But what also we can do is just copy it. And the copy will also be locked. And that, my friends, is absolute beauty of it, I feel. This is great. And uh, this is a very unique and interesting opportunity to create a newspaper in Minecraft that actually can have pictures in it. 
which is pretty cool because I'm one of the very few people on the server who actually draws. Also of note, non-locator maps in the uh, bedrock version of the game can be created using just nine paper, which is incredibly convenient and uh, will save us a lot of redstone and iron if we want to really do a print version of it, like an entire print of them. So yeah, we just need a sugarcane farm. And sugarcane can be bone milled in this version of the game. So for the first time at the very least, I think we can get away with just putting just a bunch of bone meal from the bones from Silent Whisperer's Skeleton Grinder into here. Yeah, that'll suffice. But as with many things in Minecraft, this is where we hit a really grindy stage. There is a hard way to do this and an easy way. And the hard way is to find a 100 by 28 by 100 by 28 area and fill it in with filler blocks to, to serve as the background for the new newspaper itself. There is an easy way to do this. And the easy way is to kind of fly off into the void, uh, which, yeah, I, I don't understand where is up or down right about now, but whatever. And uh, take a picture of the map that way. Seriously, which, which way is up? Ah! Uh, uh, island? Please? This on bedrock results in an inky black perfectly map, which is actually kind of cool. And on Java, this results in a kind of vomit gray color of a map, but also entirely covered. And it saves you a lot of building uh, of the, a lot of placing of the blocks. The problem, of course, that when given an option to read a paper on like the background on the left or the background on the right, I honestly think that by just modifying a tiny bit of the desert terrain on the map on the right, I will be just much better off and uh, it will be a much nicer backdrop that actually emulates the empty map type of backdrop really, really well. This is not empty map, but, map, but you get my point. The little beige color that the back that it has. Yeah, actually, let's just side. Let, let's do a side by side. Let's do a yeah, probably should collect some end stone while I'm at it. I tried out uh, some writings and uh, guys, I'll spare you the tedious process of picking out the best ink color for this. And I stopped at uh, spruce wood over the sand. And I also, by the way, <laughs> it took forever, but I actually removed that river. So the entire map right now is this yellow with tiny black and whiter spots, which is all right because uh, that's kind of the intent. I wanted it to, it to look like real life paper, so some texture needed to be applied, all right? Some texture needed to be applied. Now, you can see that everything I uh, put down, every block I use here, will eventually show up on the map. It's not instant, unlike in Java edition, but this is still working and that's enough. That's close enough, good enough for me. Uh, what I am kind of concerned about is how much text and like pictures and pixels 100 by 28 by 100 by 28 is actually <laughs> like that's a lot that's a lot of stuff that, that's a lot of text that I could potentially write that's a lot of things that I could potentially do I just now it's just now hitting me how big of a project every single issue of this uh, billboard let's put it that way will be but at the same time, I'm incredibly happy with it. And I have a bit of experience in uh, Minecraft map pixel art. For example, I know that uh, if you place the block on this level and then place another one higher than that one, and then, for example, place another one going down, then when they show up, uh, they will, all three of them will essentially be different colors. Uh, it's kind of a bit of how the game tries to interpret Elevation and de-elevation. Yeah, see, tiny bit different shade, which is alright, which is fine, which is great. I can work with that. Uh, just wanted to point that out for future maybe use in pixel arts. I don't know. We will see. What I'm right now hanged up is I don't know what to name this gazette we're doing. Which really, it's not much of a gazette. It's not, I can't even say that it's a magazine because it's one single page and that's just hilarious to me. Um, 
still though, it's still better than books because books can't have pictures in them and it's pretty freaking cool in my opinion, so I really want to follow through with this project. Anyway, back to the business at hand. We need the name for this and the names I have in mind are truly bedrock something, basically. My go-to originally was truly bedrock herald because the acronym for that would be TBH, which basically, yeah, in internet, in internet line, life, uh, kind of means to be honest, which I absolutely love. I could try something like Truly Bedrock Frontier, because that would acronym, uh, that would abbreviate to uh, TBF, to be fair, which is kind of even funnier to me, really. But I don't like the word frontier because it's there's a lot of uh, letters in it and it does not necessarily mean what I need it to mean because it doesn't really doesn't really invoke the name of a newspaper. I think I'll settle on the Herald, but I really don't want to because <laughs> fun trivia part. Hermitcraft Herald is the name of a newspaper zombie Cleo was running back in season 3 and season 4 of Hermitcraft and I'm already am enough of a ripoff of zombie Cleo from Hermitcraft. <laughs> Though I, ser I sincerely doubt that she would mind if I take the name. Actually, if she, if I knew for sure that she will be pissed off if, if I take that name, I would actually do this just to spite her. You know, all of my ideas would have been much, much cooler, or at least would look much, much cooler, if I didn't also constantly point out who I, okay, let's say, got inspired by. Anyway, here's the logo for the uh, Gazette, for the pamphlet, really, because it's a single, it's, again, it's a single page, it's more, more like a pamphlet. Plenty of headspace to the right right now, so that's where I think I will put some sort of a illustration, or maybe some sort of a editorial box, or some, one or the other. I think in illustration, because illustrations generally are more space efficient uh, in this particular case, because if I want to come up with something really, really long, like some text, it will actually take up a lot of space, so that's gonna be a tiny bit inconvenient. And uh, yeah, really, now that we got the canvas cleared and the ink ink picked up, which by the way, I chose spruce wood because it is still a very similar color to the background, but it's kind of, I didn't want to go highest contrast possible. And also spruce is incredibly easy to farm, so that's why we're using darker brown, okay, lighter brown instead of, for example, black, which, again, black means uh, black dye, means squid, means a lot of farming. Now, picked out the ink, that we uh, cleared out the canvas, that we figured out what do we want from this uh, gazette to be, we gotta go hunt for stories. Okay, so we pick out a spot, we kinda... F1 out print screen and I honestly don't think that this is gonna work but if it is gonna work that will be absolutely amazing because we go alt tab control V there we have it and now this is what we're gonna work with this is the approximate by the way uh, approximate size of the picture okay not a size not not really the ratio of horizontal to vertical though really if you want cor uh, the correct ratio it will be something more like yeah something more like that though honestly we can probably manipulate the spacing tiny bit and one way of doing this would be of course to haboot and add there and and then just kind of shrink it just shrink it good shrink it real real good pixelate basically the crab out of it and do we have there we go how about that how about we how about we look at that this is the laziest way to do pixel art by the way <laughs> um probably would be a good idea to scale it down one more bit but honestly this is actually a really 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 good version of the picture that i'm trying to do now I need to artistically, artistically modify it to be only in a couple of color colors 
in one color at all, really, if we're honest, because I really do not want to introduce colored printing just yet, because that's a, that's a hassle. So this is where I find out that, wow, turns out all the planks have the exactly same color on the map. However, if you position blocks in this diagonal way, with the rise going towards the north, you get this shadow effect on them, which is also kind of checkerboardy at the moment, but still it works and that kind of is really brilliant, really cool. You see, this is how the map itself usually uh, indicates the decline and uphill of the terrain, but we're using this to our advantage to get an additional color out of the same material. Um, and a color that is close enough to be recognizable and similar. So that's how we got the checkerboard pattern for the roof materials. And I also added a bit of a texture for the bottom. And as a result, in my personal opinion, it is already looking pretty good and I'm not even finished. Now, this is of course not my best pixel art ever. And honestly, I'm not even a pixel art artist that much. But... I am pretty sure that only so many of my, <laughs> only several of my previous clients who ever commissioned me some, uh, a piece of art would go, would see this and go, wow, did I, sh should I never have hired this guy? <laughs> only some of them will, will look at this and be like, yeah, can I please have my money back? Spoiler alert, they can't. And of course, there's a little paragraph of text, well, basically one single sentence uh, that I decided that will be our, you know, main article for the bit. Help wanted, players looking to score some cash can find jobs and rewards at the Freelance Tavern. And then there's a picture of the Freelance Tavern, just so people will know exactly where to look. That is pretty much the goal of this issue. And I have half of it left to fill in. So, um, yeah, I gotta come up with something. Hopefully people around the server need some advertisement or some stuff like that. Because if not, I will really have to go hunt for a story or something. And so many hours later and quite a bit of work, honestly. <laughs> you do not want to know how much this took me. Um... Yeah, we got our first ever issue of the Truly Bedrock Herald. <sighs> Here it is. Yeah, <laughs> it looks nicer from space, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we have the Truly Bedrock Herald number one, help wanted players looking to score some cash, yada yada. Uh, we have a medical, medical article, actually. Uh, is eating carrots bad? No, it's not. That, that it's it's a sh it's short, but it is to to the point. I feel. And also, we got a missing person poster for uh, Chuck Loder, who people last saw in season zero of True Bedrock, and uh, never since. So uh, we're all quite alarmed. And if you know anything about the location of that person, please contact the authorities. And finally. Last but definitely not least, we have a quick comic strip of Jelly, which is, uh, uh, yeah, a cat, and that's kind of her entire thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. I think, I think if nothing else, the Jelly comic strip will absolutely score us some sales in this apartment. I also need to figure out some way of informing people about there being an opportunity to put an ad into this new newspaper instead of like uh, the lost, for example, instead of the lost person poster, there might be something, uh, some advertisement for your shop or whatever. Or we can m maybe even shield for somebody later into the season. But we'll see, we'll see, especially since there is a problem, like, a, a, ro a huge roadblock in that idea is that I really don't see this being, that, like, new issues coming out o more often than once a month. Because this one page took me 
an entire night and I just want to finish the episode and go to sleep, to be completely honest. <laughs> ah, I do this to myself. Ooh, ooh. And that's what really hurts. But no, no, no. Let's not let that slow us down. Uh, here goes the cartography table. Here goes the lock. And let's call it uh, T B H number one. Ah, it feels amazing. It feels so very satisfying. All right, I'm gonna go grab a stack of empty maps. I'm gonna make a copy of this one and then we're gonna sell it because of course we're gone. Let's see. Uh, we don't really need to do anything that specific or that complicated here. Uh, so I'm just gonna plop down a double chest and uh, put down a newspaper. 1p uh, for it. Drag this out and yes, the entirety of it, uh, the entire set of the newspapers is just 17. 17 or so. Um, why I hear you ask? Well, because you only have, what, 15 people on the server, plus two spares, plus I won't buy one, so that's three spares, plus I already have one in my attic, the original one, saved and framed, so that's another spare. Basically, yes, we don't really need anyone to be... Uh, we don't really need that many of these, which is a bit of a shame because they're really easy to replicate like incredibly easy to replicate and uh, yeah by that logic by that logic I really wish we needed more of those but we only really need one and uh, not, not not one we only really need so many which is whatever if you're gonna need more we actually can just make more and uh, that is the brilliance of this entire scheme I can't wait to see somebody actually collecting them like that would be absolutely amazing to me if someone actually bothered to sit down and collect every single issue <laughs> it just it would be so adorable to be so adorable um i genuinely don't know what el what else to add here i'm kind of entirely drained of ideas after <laughs> after me after drawing this entire newspaper which I guess is why I'm drained of ideas. Let me know down in the comments if you know some sort of really, really cool design for a new stand. Because those are usually actually really fun. I mean, I could probably add some bookshelves, but uh, bookshelves really have nothing to do with what we're trying to do here. Heck, a cartography table would fit better. But uh, let's not get hung up on that. Well then, let's wait for the customers. And uh, let's see what this leads to. Hopefully to great things. Because this has been, after all, even though I am exhausted right now, this has been an amazing project. And I'm so, so very happy that we took it. Actually, now that like, uh, this is close to the end of the video and only like hardcore Zloy fans are still here. Because everybody else realized that this episode is boring and left. Uh, I just wanted to point out that throughout this season of truly bedrock you might find an over overarching theme with everything i do and that kind of is i don't know it's in-depth slow lore honestly it's kind of this season of truly bedrock me going full out just full-on pressing because many of the things that i do can be traced down to me sometime in the past or sometime in the present saying that that is something I want to do. For example, the money thing idea came to me back in like Minecraft 1.7 when they first added the book copying mechanic. Um, the mending shop, the shop, the mending shop, not the mending, the, the pickaxe shop, the shop that sells pickaxes uh, enchanted with mending for the price uh, lower than the price of just crafting one. I actually did that before on a much, 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 much slow, lower scale on the side of the vanilla season three. And uh, even the iron I was selling on that very season. And this, having the news, the newspaper, this is also kind of just the grand finale for me. And I cannot wait 
to see what happens. And the Nether Hub, by the way, also, I'm doing this season's Nether Hub, which is something I absolutely love. My point is, I'm incredibly happy with this season and the way it is going so far. But that just brings me back to the end of this episode. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. This has been Zloyak, but this has been truly bedrock. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, do leave a like, and if you want to see more and want to not miss the rest of the season, do subscribe, I would really, really appreciate it. To be continued, have a good one, bye-bye.